Hello and welcome back to another video. In this video we're going to talk about exceptions versus error values. So exceptions versus error values has been a debate in programming for a very long time. They're both very good to use, they both serve very similar purposes, but there are a few differences between them. And people have taken sides, programmer languages have taken sides, you know, so let's see what we're going to talk about here. We'll start out with a few basic examples of what either of them are, then we'll talk about some of their similarities, some of their differences, then finally which ones you should use, what you should consider when deciding which ones to use. All right, so let's get to it. So first of all, here is an example of using exceptions. So the method foo at the top, it has a try cuts block, right, where the cuts block cuts is an exception that bar may throw, and the method bar throws an exception sometimes, okay? So that's the basic syntax for it. If you wanted something in JavaScript, here is the exact same code, but written in JavaScript instead. Yeah, so how it works very quickly is when an exception is thrown, then it's going to look for the closest cuts block, for the closest try cuts block, right? So that might be in the same function. So for example, bar, you know, it might have a try cuts around the throw new error part, right? Or it might be in full where, where it is now, right? So if bar throws an exception, it's going to be caught in full in the cuts block. And you know, I'm, I'm sorry you know how it works, right? Next is the error value. So here is some code showing what you would do with an error value. So basically with an error value, you basically return a value that's an error, right? And there are different ways to do this. So you can directly return an error, right? So don't throw it, return it. Or, you know, depending on your programming language, maybe it doesn't allow you to either return an error or a value, right? Like in the example we saw a second ago. Maybe you have to always return the same thing. So here is an example where you always return an object, which has a property for error and a property for value, right? And if everything went well, then the property value will have a value to return and the error property will be empty. Right? But if something went wrong, then the error property will have the error value and the value property will be null or undefined or something. To handle them, you just have an if statement in the caller of that function. Okay? All right, so that's some basics on how to use them. Let's talk a, a bit about their similarities. So essentially, exceptions and error values are extremely similar, right? The number one thing they do, the number one purpose in life is if something goes wrong, right? It's an alternative return value from a function or a method that whether it's in an if statement or in a cuts block, it makes the code do something else. That's their entire purpose for existence. Something went wrong, do something else. Okay? So they both do that just as well. They also share a downside and that's that whether you're using one or the other, it's very easy to just not handle it properly. With an exception, right? you may just have an empty cuts block and with error values, you may just not handle them. You might have an if statement that catches them and does nothing, or you may not even have the if statement. Okay. So it's very easy to forego your error handling with both of them. And that's quite bad as we've seen in other videos on error handling. Now let's talk a bit about their differences. You know, they have the similarities, but they have some differences as well. So starting with performance. Now, performance for error values is supposed to be a little bit faster. And that's because in many languages, not all, but in many, catching exceptions is quite a slow process, right? However, for the most part, it shouldn't really make any difference because exceptions are supposed to be exceptional, which means extremely rare. So in that case, it shouldn't make a difference to your normal execution of the program if an exception is thrown once every a very long time, okay? The second difference between them is crashing versus silent bugs. So with exceptions, if you don't catch them, if you forget to catch them somewhere, they're going to crash the program. And in my personal opinion, that's the better option as we've talked about in the video and article on how to respond to errors. Crashing is a better default option in most cases. On the other hand, an, un an untested error value will just result in a silent bug, right? It may crash, but it's also very likely that it will have a silent bug and that can be really bad unless you've explicitly determined that that's the option you should go for. It can be really bad to have that as your default option. So in my opinion, exceptions are a little bit better in this case. 
Another important point is bubbling, right? So if you throw an exception, it's going to naturally bubble up and up and up the call stack until it hits a cut block that can handle it, all right? But with error values, that's not the case. With error values, you must explicitly return them from every function. Like if you want them to be handled higher up, and that might be the case as we've seen in best practices for error handling, right? You need to handle errors at the appropriate place. So that might not be in the current function or even the caller, it might be a few steps up. So with error values, it's very verbose to return them up and up and up. With exceptions, it's very easy. But that is also on the flip side of the coin, error values are very explicit. You can tell what's going on in the code immediately. You can see everything. You can see the flow of the code exactly. You can see exactly where the error value is going and where it's going to be caught. But with exceptions, you, you can't do that, right? You might be working in a function somewhere and you may not remember, is this going to be caught somewhere? You know, if you throw an exception, is it going to be caught somewhere? Where is it going to be caught? Um, it's a lot harder to track how the error handling flows throughout your code base. And that can make it much more difficult to be precise and exact and thorough with your error handling, okay? And finally, you have suitability in functional programming. So generally, functional programming prefers error values. Um, and that's for a few reasons. One of them is because functional programming promotes immutability and pure functions, right? And if you're using something like exceptions, this is the kind of code that you'll normally be using, right? So here is an example. So you define a variable named A and you assign it to something in the try block. But of course, to be able to use it in other blocks, like a final block, you need to mutate it because you need to declare it outside of the try block, okay? So, you know, this breaks immutability and mutability is frowned upon in functional programming. Another reason is because thrown exceptions are not standard return values, which messes up the pure function part. And it's also more difficult to use them with generics and things like that. But unless you care about functional programming a lot, then, you know, this point is neutral. It's, it's just one of the points to consider. It's not the end all be all. Okay, a quick side note here. In some more modern, rather, in some newer programming languages, such as Rust and Swift, they change things up a little bit. So for example, they both force you to check for all errors, whether that's error values or exceptions. They force you to check for them, which is really good if you want a really robust program, if you want to make sure that you've handled all of your errors properly. Okay, so that's a really good thing. And also, in the case of Swift, which uses exceptions, it makes exception bubbling more explicit. So it still allows them to bubble automatically, right? But it needs you to, to mark functions with the keyboard throws. So again, it makes it more explicit. It's good in terms of being thorough with your error handling. The downside, of course, yet again, is that it makes things more verbose. All right, so that was a bit about the similarities and differences, but which ones should you choose? So there are a few things to consider here. One important consideration straight away is what is the common one to use in your programming language of choice, right? So for example, languages like C Sharp and Java, and even JavaScript, they are pretty heavily based on exceptions, right? Whereas some other languages are pretty heavily based on error values. Now that doesn't mean you need to use those. You can perfectly well ignore that, but it's one reason to consider if you care about, hey, other developers, what will they be used to? And you know, whatever, things like that. Having said that, here are some thoughts to think about if you, you know, if, if you want to see some practical reasons other than just the convention, okay? So it seems to me like the main consideration that you need to make is how much robustness and safety do you want in comparison to verbosity, okay? Because there is a scale here. The more robust, the more safe you are, the more verbose you're going to have to be, as we said about exceptions automatically bubbling, for example, and things like that. So obviously, right, being forced to check for lower errors, like some programming languages make you do, has obvious benefits, right? It, it means that your program is going to be much safer and much more robust. Likewise, having explicit propagation of those errors is also a great benefit. It means that you can reason about your code much better. You won't be caught out by things, by not remembering, hey, this exception isn't actually caught anywhere. I need to handle this. It will eliminate those errors, right? 
that has obvious benefits in terms of robustness. The downside is verbosity, and verbosity can also have downsides, right? It's not just, you know, let's all head towards the safety train. No, because verbosity can make the code less readable, okay? And it can also make it harder to make large changes to code. So it's not all, you know, roses with a safety path. And it is something you are going to have to consider. So it's up to you to decide where you stand on that, on that scale of safety versus verbosity. How I think of it is a little bit like this. If you want maximum safety, I would personally use a language that forces you to check for all errors and forces explicit propagation of errors. I think that's the number one safety option here. I consider one level lower to be error values. And that's because, you know, assuming you don't ignore checking them, right? The explicit propagation I find useful. And finally, the least safe and also the most convenient, in my opinion, are the exceptions, normal exceptions, where, you know, you, you can still do all your error checking thoroughly. It doesn't mean it has to be less safe. It just means that you need to be disciplined to actually do that error checking. And of course, the bubble automatically, so it's very convenient. So finally, my personal preference is, it depends on what kind of project I'm working on. If I'm working on super critical projects, then I lean towards that. And if I'm working on normal projects that aren't super critical, I would lean more towards normal exceptions for their convenience, basically. So that's basically it. You know, we have a lot more videos on error handling on this channel and many more coming up as well. So please subscribe if you want to see those videos. It's an extremely important topic. So, you know, I recommend you do have a look at them when you get the chance. And if you like this video, then please like the video. If you, if you disagree with anything or if you have any comments, then please leave a comment below. And yeah, thank you for watching and see you on the next one.